Hello, this is Clarity Design and we're just going to have a look at how we can animate inside Maya um, and how to generate uh, animation, keyframe animation in particular. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be using the timeline down here so we'll have a quick look at that and we'll have a quick look at the uh, channel box here um, and we will go through a basic animation generation. Okay, so first of all let's have a look at the timeline. At the moment you can see I've got 24 frames showing and when I click playback it's going to play those 24 then it will start back from the beginning. Now it does that even though there's 48 frames in my scene at the moment because uh, they're not displaying. So it will only display what is displayed in the top bar in the top timeline. Now I've got 48 frames showing and if I click play it will play through the 48 frames. Obviously you can't see anything happening because there's no animation yet. Normally you're going to want more than two seconds worth of animation which is uh, 24 frames per second 48 is uh, two seconds of animation. Um, so you can pick a number which is appropriate for you. Type it into the box and press enter. So 200 is uh, is good for this tutorial. Um, if you type it into uh, this box here, which is the one which tells you how many frames are displaying in the timeline, then it will automatically increase how many frames are in your scene as well. Um, so let's shrink this back down again so that we can only see about a second's worth. So let's go back down to 24, 25. Um, so I've got just over a second's worth of animation being viewed here. Um, I've also just inside my uh, options, I've got to make sure that I'm playing back play speed here is real time 24 frames per second so that I get a good idea about the animation speed and control that I'm getting. Um, over here you've got the channel box and these are the main uh, channels translate, uh, rotate and scale and visibility and when you press S which is a shortcut for keyframe on the keyboard it will uh, key in all of these but that's not all the channels you can keyframe in fact um, you can keyframe pretty much anything um, if you right click on an object you can go up if you see key selected um, then you can key it, okay, or key all. So in the same way, if I'm an attribute editor and I wanted to change the color of an object, I can go across to the Lambert, which is what's applied at the moment. Um, I wouldn't advise using Lambert 1 at other stages, but let's just uh, right click here and let's just uh, set key. And then I'm gonna move it to a later frame. Let's change that color. and then set key and with a little bit of luck you should see that that changes okay so the computer has started animating that for me um, let's set this up let's do this now um, so I'm gonna just uh, squash that down a little bit so it looks like a squashed ball um, I'm gonna move that down to here um, <coughs> So it's uh, hitting just about hitting the surface. We'll use that as a ground plane. Um, so I'll just position it there. So I'm going to set a first position by pressing S. And then I'm going to move to a later frame. Uh, this is where I want the um, animation to be back where it was to begin with. And I'm going to press S again. So um, between the two, nothing's happened. So uh, nothing's happened. But I've got two keyframes here. And that's because I'm going to do a, a cyclical animation. So it's going to get... Um, it's going to go somewhere and then it's going to come back to the starting point. So it's easier to put the keyframe in at the end and then do the deformation in the middle. So then uh, move to this, uh, the middle frame or the frame where I want to change it. Um, move it up, change that scale. And again, I can press S. Now there is uh, the option here um, of putting on uh, automatic keyframe. Um, that can be really useful for quick animation if you don't want to have to keep remembering to press S, but it will record everything you change. Um, and sometimes that generates data and, and key points that you didn't expect or you don't want. So I find it easier to start off without using that, but feel free to have a play around. So here's my basic animation. Okay. So uh, we've got a uh, keyframe up to the top, bouncing back down. Um, what happens if I want to then uh, change or um, maybe add some extra more complexity to this? So let's have a look. If I wanted to change this keyframe, all I need to do is go to the frame where the, where the key tick is, um, change it a little bit and press S again and it will overwrite the original. Okay, so that's easy enough. If I want to delete a keyframe, uh, you can right click on the timeline where the tick is 
and you can delete it. Now if you've got a few frames in an area, if you press shift and click on the timeline and drag out and then right click, you can delete and it will delete all the keyframes in that area. Okay, so that's how to get rid of accidental keyframes or things you don't want. If you want to keyframe something that is, uh, let's just do something silly, like let's just rotate this. Um, so if I'm going to uh, do something like, I just want to keyframe, add a keyframe in, maybe on frame 16 for the rotation of this object, and rotate that round. Let's rotate Z look and I will right click and key selected. Now that means that this key um, looks exactly the same as the others but it's only recorded the rotation Z at that point in time. Okay, none of the others. So it's going from here and it's changing the rotate Z. Okay, and then obviously that's coming back again here because the rotation Z was keyframed when I pressed S originally. Okay, so um, gives you an idea of how you can keyframe and the complexities of animation you can get into. Well, I hope that um, helps you with getting started with keyframe animation. Um, all the best.